When it comes to digital ebook readers, there's one company that's completely dominated the market, and that's Amazon. Its Kindle devices are the go to portable e readers. But with a few different models available at different prices, which should you buy? The Kindle Paperwhite, the Oasis, or just the bog standard Kindle? I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint, and in this video, I'll hopefully help you to answer that very question. And if you do like this video, please do hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. So of course, the first thing to consider is what is your budget? As with anything, one main thing to consider is what your budget is. How much are you willing to pay? Because the Oasis is quite pricey. As an example, in the UK, even the cheapest version of the Oasis is near enough £230. The Paperwhite is about £100 less than that, and the standard Kindle is about £70. Of course, throughout the year, Amazon has regular discount periods like Prime Day and Black Friday, and they'll inevitably be available for cheaper than their full retail price at those points. They always are. So if you don't mind waiting, wait for those. But moving on, going with the most clear difference between these models and particularly the Oasis and it's in the design. For starters, the Oasis has a rear case made from aluminium that gives it a much more premium and solid look and feel than the other two, which are plastic. But that's not what makes the biggest difference to the experience of using one. It's incredibly thin, except down one side where it has this grip on the back. That makes it really easy to hold with one hand. And because the interface auto rotates and it has buttons, you can hold it in your left hand or your right hand. And the center of balance is just at the beginning of the grip, so you don't have to hold on tight either. It just rests naturally in a single hand. Now, while the other two are plastic, they're not the same. Paperwhite has a soft touch plastic finish on the back where the basic model has a cheaper, harder finish that's a lot more plasticky. And while the other two have completely flush front surfaces, the cheapest model has a raised plastic edge around the display. And that has a habit of collecting fine dust and particles and sometimes it can get in the way. Still, the Paperwhite's soft touch finish makes it very nice to hold. As I briefly mentioned before, the Kindle Oasis has physical buttons, and that adds an extra level of convenience, especially if you want to read one-handed. You can just click them to turn pages, rather than have to use your other hand or try and swipe on the screen with the same hand that you're using to hold the reader. One last thing in terms of durability for the two more expensive models is that the Oasis and the Paperwhite both have IPX8 water resistance. That means you can read them in the bath or at the pool, wherever. You can rest knowing coming into contact with water will not ruin them. Now onto the screen, the lighting and the reading experience now. And when it comes to the screen and reading experiences, the Paperwhite and Oasis share some common features. For instance, both feature 300 pixel per inch sharpness. That means text is crisp and sharp. And screen size is similar too, although not identical with the Paperwhite featuring a 6.8 inch display and the Oasis measuring seven inches. It's not a huge difference though, not really. They both even feature an adjustable warm light, and you can schedule that for when you want it to come on if you want it to. Where there's a slight difference is that the Oasis features more LEDs as part of its front lighting system, but it's not a huge number more. It's 25 versus 17. It does, however, feature auto brightness as standard, and so can adapt its brightness to be better suited to your environment, so you don't have to constantly swipe on the screen to adjust it manually to suit your eyes. You can even set it to dim at night time on its own. The Paperwhite doesn't do this, at least not unless you pay extra for the signature version. Both also feature dark mode. Now the standard Kindle doesn't have any of those fancy features. It's got a 167 pixel per inch screen and is noticeably less sharp than either of the other two, but it's still perfectly good for reading at arm's length. At six inches, it's also the smallest display of the three and there's no warm light either and no dark mode. It does have a front lit screen, which is a major upgrade on the basic Kindle that came before, and it means you can finally read the cheapest model at night time. Now onto battery life and performance, and one of the biggest benefits of Amazon using e-ink displays on their Kindles is that they're extremely battery efficient. So whichever of these models you get, you'll have very good battery life, but even there, there are significant differences. The Paperwhite is the top performer here, offering up to 10 weeks of battery on a full charge. Kindle Oasis can do about six weeks, where the basic Kindle does four. Plus, when it comes to charging them, the Paperwhite has the convenience of USB-C charging as well, rather than the micro USB connector that's on the other two. And if you want, you can even get wireless charging on it if you go for the premium signature edition. But again, that costs more than the standard Paperwhite. 
As for general performance, both the Paperwhite and Oasis are similarly fast, and by comparison, make the regular Kindle feel a little bit sluggish. Now while they all come with at least 8GB of storage, both the Signature Paperwhite and the Oasis are available as 32GB versions. So for those with mega book libraries or those who want to download lots of audiobooks, you've got lots of storage there. What's more, the Oasis is also available as an option with free mobile connectivity, so you can download your written or audible books anywhere there's cellular signal. You don't have to use Wi-Fi. That, however, is a bit more of a luxury feature and will set you back quite a bit extra over the standard Oasis cost. There is one last thing worth considering too, and that's children. Both the regular Kindle and the Paperwhite come as kids editions as well. These versions come with a protective, colourful case, a two-year warranty that covers accidental damage, and a 12-month subscription to Amazon Kids Plus. So you get child-friendly books and magazines without paying extra. These models do cost a bit more than the standard models, but they're well worth it. So which is the best Kindle? From my point of view, you can get a really good Kindle experience from the newest Paperwhite, without having to spend a huge amount of money. You get a sharp, evenly lit screen with waterproofing and a warm temperature lighting, which is really useful at night time. Of all the Kindles, it has the longest battery life and the convenience of USB-C charging. What's more, if you really want added extras like a screen with auto brightness or wireless charging, you could opt for the Signature Edition. It's a really fantastic Kindle and the one that I'd recommend to most people. There's still a lot of joy in the experience of using the Oasis though. It has the most LEDs lighting up the screen for a more even experience. And auto brightness as standard. Plus, with its premium build and the buttons, it's a fantastic device to hold and use. But probably one we'd only say is worth getting if you're a prolific reader and would use it virtually every day. As for the basic Kindle, it is the most affordable giving you a decent experience. You'll get access to all the same content. For the price, it's great value and the one to get if you don't read all that much. But if you can, we'd still recommend paying the extra and getting the Paperwhite. It's just that much better. And for a device that will probably last you years, it's worth that extra bit of investment. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. If you want to ask me questions or follow me, you can do. If you did like this video and found it helpful, please do give a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you don't miss any of our videos. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.